brand new car and that brand new sponsorship, Jurassic Park The Ride, on board the number 24. The Jurassic Park car was, it was bad to the bone. It was, they were a different zip code. It was, I mean, it was, it was not even close. From the first time that car went on the racetrack, it was just wow. He could run it on the bottom. The car never moved. It looked like a slot car. It looked like when you were a kid and you made one of those slot cars. And you know, gee, 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 that's what it looked like. And even when we watched it on the racetrack, I went, wow, that's, that thing is unbelievable. When's, when's it going to give up? You know, when's it going to slide up the racetrack? And nah, it wasn't. Jeff Gordon yeah, we had such an awesome car that NASCAR said, we don't want you to bring this version back. And they made some rule changes so, so that we could. A few short tempers and jam-packed grandstands. That's the recipe for the Winston. NASCAR's all-star race is just around the corner at the Charlotte Motor Speedway on a beautiful night for racing. Hi, everybody. I'm Eli Gold. Welcome to TNN Motorsports. Glad you're part of this all-star weekend celebration. Pumped up and uh, tell you what, we're going to go out and get them tonight. Hey, they're debuting a brand new car this weekend. Let's go back upstairs to Eli. Brand new car and that brand new sponsorship, Jurassic Park The Ride, on board the number 24 DuPont Chevrolet. And then there's Ernie Irvin. Everybody talking about Ernie and Speedway. Meanwhile, Jeff Bodine in the 10th starting spot has the... When you go to Charlotte for racing or qualifying, there's a family that you got to look at, the legendary Wood Brothers. 13 straight poles and six points paying wins along with last year's Winston. Leonard, what's the secret to qualifying at Charlotte? Well, you know, we uh, had a great driver and then uh, it's just one of them things that you get get things going your way, you know, and the car and the way we set it up and all fit the driving. Uh, it was just, seemed like it, uh, we had real good luck at Charlotte qualifying, but Atlanta, we didn't have that great uh, it qualifying, but we won the Atlanta race and then won more Atlanta races than we did at Charlotte. But uh, it's just we had everything uh, going our way, really. You're going to come and help Jeff Gordon and I with that setup because we've got to win about uh, 10 more poles to catch up with you guys. Uh, we've been thinking about coming over to uh, you guys and <laughs> see if we can't get a little help. I mean, you guys have really got it all together. and. Uh, I think you got all the ingredients it takes to make a winning combination. Len and Eddie, last year's Winston, you guys uh, come from behind and ended up having one of the strongest cars, but you had some transmission trouble and almost didn't win the race. Our, our biggest trouble last year during Winston, the car pushed all night, and we had tried some stuff earlier in the week, and uh, it didn't work. And we got down to the last, that last 10 lap deal, and it began to the track or something, become, you know, come our way so we threw everything at it we pulled a couple of rubbers out and put a couple in and changed air pressure and, and it worked and I mean we were we were as surprised as everybody else was but, you know it's sometimes you get lucky are you bringing the same car yeah we're bringing the same one it's number 16 it's the same car that Morgan Shepherd won uh, Atlanta in 1993 and uh, it's where it's our best car so we'll have it ready well, with the winning history that these guys have at Charlotte and the winning history that that car has, I would say the rest of us might be in for a little trouble. 
Now let's take a look at the starting grid for the 1997 running of the Winston. And row number 10. First in 95, Jeff Gordon. 1-800-MARROW-2 sponsoring the in-car cameras for Jeff Gordon. And our Humpy Wheeler, the president of Charlotte Motor Speedway, uncannily normally predicts the winners of this race. He has picked Dale Earnhardt to win. We'll see in about an hour's time. Here we go. Glad you're with us on TNN Motorsports. The all-star race is underway for Winston. this 30 lap segment that was a Kodak moment <laughs> Jeff Gordon running in the sixth spot let's go to his pit for an update Eli we talk a lot about how Jeff Gordon has a Jurassic Park paint job well underneath it is also a brand new chassis it's the first of the second generation Hendrick chassis being developed at Hendrick Motorsports they've been working on it since last August Ken Howe Rick Stump and Phil Hammer have been working on this. Different supports, all kinds of mounting brackets are all different. They think this is the wave of the future because they basically feel they've developed all they can out of the current chassis. And they've worked on it so long between different projects, they nickname it Elsie because a lot of people thought they'd be milking the job. Uh-huh. announced here yesterday that they have come out with a brand new container for cereal brand new cereal box promoting that phone number 1-800-MARROW-2 to get folks to become bone marrow donors for those who need not just Rick Hendrick but for people all around the country problems now Eli in fifth place as we watch the lead right here these guys are fighting it out Jeff Gordon has come from last place to fifth he is really turning it on Big puff of smoke. He's going in the garage. He is all done for the day. And Bobby Hamilton's going to follow him down the pit lane as we ride with Jeff Gordon. Two are to the garage. Two are going to the garage. Ernie Irvin's night is done, and apparently Bobby Hamilton as well. You are riding with the rocket ship right now. Jeff Gordon has taken fourth place now. He is really getting around here. We're with Mark Martin now. He's running at fifth. Well, if this is the first race with the next generation, then they don't have much time on that car, and they don't have much experience with it. This has got to be a worrisome thing for all of the other teams. Ray Evernham said, this car is our future. This is where we're headed. Well, where is he in relation to the leaders? There's the front three. And we'll drop back. Back, and there you see Jeff Gordon pivoting in, and there goes the battle for the lead. Oh, Jarrett was looking. Every time they get side by side in the front up there, Jeff Gordon closes in another 10 car lengths. I tell you, he's really on the move. On the racetrack, Jeff Gordon continues to close in on the front group of three. Again, from the brute airship overhead, there are the front three, and now look how quickly Jeff is closing in on him. You called it, buddy. I tell you what, he's got that thing turned on kill right now. That car is going around this racetrack, right around the bottom of the racetrack, that white line there. That's where the uh, flat part of the racetrack and the bank start. Jeff Gordon has that car dialed in. He's run them down some, a good half a lap in, in this one segment. He doesn't care how he gets there. Remember in 95, he won all three segments of the race and led 49 of the 70 laps that night. But uh, he'll take a ride to the front anyway he can get it here this evening. This has got to put a smile on car owner Rick Hendrick's face. One of his cars has already won the Open. Gordon running so well. Eli, this is going to be a four-car race in the next lap or so. Gordon is now down to three car laps in fourth place there. It's the th first three cars. You see them there? Just behind them. Jeff Gordon is right on them now. 
I think he may run out of time as far as winning it, but he sure has made a tremendous challenge towards the front. And remember, the finishing order of this segment will be inverted to start segment two. From Michael Waltrip to Jeff Gordon as we check the in cars. And around Bill Elliott. Easily done right there. Wow. <laughs> wow. I mean, easily done. Wow. Well, those two guys in front of him better watch it because here he comes. Now, what do you adjust on this car at the break? <laughs> yeah, Glenn Jarrett, what can they do? They got to be tickled. Oh, they absolutely are, Eli. And Ray Everham just told Jeff, buddy, go for it. Win this thing. You've got the race car to do it. Don't hold anything back. We can come from the back in the second segment as well. So, hammer down is all Gordon knows right now, and that's all Everham wants to see. You see, six tenths of a second. The interval. Thousand dollar paycheck. If he can hold off the challenge of Earnhardt, that's seemingly bound to come, or is it? Here goes Dale down low. Oh, he made a hard run at him. Looks like Jarrett might have it, though, as they come down to the flag. Jarrett Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon take home the top honors. And $7,500 for Jeff Gordon. But now, the first shall be last. We're back. Now, let's go to Matt Yoakum. Well, Jeff Gordon is sitting patiently in his car. Jeff, not too bad of a showing for this debut of this new 24 car, 19th to 3rd. Yeah, that's what this race is all about, man. You just go all out. I tell you, when the car is as fast as this thing is, there's no way I'm going to hold back. I'm going to go all the way. And uh, yeah, I need a few more laps. I think I could have got those guys. We got a little bit tight. We're going to free it up. We're going to be even better this second segment here. Now let's go back upstairs to Eli. Doesn't look as though he's even broken a sweat. And there are the uh, Labonte crews working. That's Terry Labonte's group. Bobby Labonte and Terry will be starting on the front row in the second segment. But first, why don't we take a break for Ray Everham's Tech Fact, brought to you by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. It's time for the 1997 Winston. The Winston is a unique event to NASCAR Winston Cup racing because it's broken into three segments. Two 30-lap segments, followed by a 10-lap shootout. And we'll make adjustments in between. We know about wedge, changing the weight on each tire. We know about pannard rods. Lowering the pannard rod makes the car tighter. Raising the pannard rod makes the car looser. We'll also use tire pressure. Dropping the tire pressure or raising the tire pressure by as little as one pound can make a big difference in the tire's spring rate. We'll use spring rubbers. Putting a piece of rubber in a spring or pulling it out of a spring can make that spring stiffer or softer by as much as 25%. But what's really different about this year than all the years past? Well, NASCAR's made an aerodynamic rule change. They've made us take the fenders from 76 inches wide to 74 inches wide. That's taking front downforce away from the cars. To get that downforce back, you're gonna see a lot of guys putting more and more tape on as the night goes on. The more tape goes on, the more engine temperature comes up. The more engine temperature comes up, the bigger your chances are of blowing up. How important is that tape? Jeff Gordon went from second to fifth in Talladega when one strip of tape came off. There's Ricky Rudd now with Jeff Gordon, Ward Burton in the 22, and Dale Jowett in the 88. That's ninth, 10th, 11th spots. Strong cars from the first segment working their way through traffic. Rudd in the 10 has run every one of these races. Third is his best finish ever. You see who's fixing to break out of this pack. You can see the 24 there of Jeff Gordon. He's just about to break through this pack and look for him to come towards the front. The uh, Bill Elliott car. Look at the 24 car, Jeff Gordon. Though. He's already moved up to seventh spot. This is for seventh. He's trying to get by Sterling Marlin as they go through the corner. He's going to get him, too. Give him seventh spot. Well, Gordon is always a story, isn't he? He is. Talent that runneth over. Yep. And next to last to the first segment. Wow, here he comes again. Fifth place. Got it for Jeff Gordon ahead of Jeff Bodine. Right now, though, Rick Hendrick's got to be a happy man. He's got guys running. His cars are running second, third, and fourth on the racetrack. And Jeff Gordon, once again, is coming like a freight train. 
There you see Jeff Gordon. He's now running in the fourth spot, five and a half seconds behind the race leader, Matt Yoakum. Eli, before the last break, Jeff Gordon was complaining the car was pushing off the corner. So during the intermission, they pulled out a spring rubber, adjusted the car with air pressure. Now the car is a little loose, but it's coming to him. It's continuing to get a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter. He says by the time this segment's over, they should be in great shape. Make a little bit minor adjustments with air pressure and go for the win. There's Gordon. You see his back slid just a bit now on the stopwatches. Eli, I think he might have made a little too much adjustment on Gordon's car because he is not running like he did in the first segment. As a matter of fact, I believe that Dale Jarrett, it may be a little bit quicker. He's one car behind Gordon right now, and he seems to be closing in on him. You saw six seconds the interval from first back to Gordon. It's three and in the garage. Ernie Irvin and Bobby Hamilton with engine failure. Here we go. Strap on tight. 10 laps to settle, $200,000 to win it all. It was a textbook start. Boy, Ricky Craven got a great run up off that corner. He's going down the back straightaway. You can see right there, he's making a move. He's right on Bobby Labonte on the bottom side. Bobby took the low side away, but it's going to cost him and Craven. The draft to his high side, and neither man can get back in line. They'll lose four or five spots. Terry Labonte is the leader. Spencer right through the dirt in the infield for the low side to the high side. Wow, what a move. He's Jeff. in fourth. Gordon is right there. Here comes Jeff off turn two. He's making a move on Bobby Labonte, Terry Labonte down the back straightaway. Gordon hasn't left yet tonight. Hendrick Motorsports teammates. Give it to Gordon. Here they come back towards the start finish line. Gordon leads lap number two of this final 10 lap segment. There will be some orders placed for that car. Four car lengths to separation. Gordon to Terry Labonte and Bobby Labonte. Jurassic Park, the ride. And Gordon's given it quite a ride tonight, leading this final segment of the Winston. Started all the way in the absolute back of the pack in the first segment. Ran well in that first segment, finished third. Problem is, does he have enough time now to try and chase down Gordon? Gordon's got a substantial lead. You just saw it there. Gordon has been so spectacular in these Winstons and Winston Opens. First came here in 93, crashed out while leading, won the Open in 94, won the Winston in 95. That whole last year. Yeah. Up front, folks, it is one and a tenth now for Jeff Gordon. He's getting gone. <laughs> Whatever they adjusted on that car, Eli, they did right at, at that uh, second segment in there because Jeff Gordon is running right around the base of the racetrack. It was a $200,000 fix. And then the turn three, very, very fast. White flag for Jeff Gordon. He's a mile and a half away from a $200,000 payday. He won $7,500 for a third place finish in segment number one. But this is the one he wanted. Well, Rick Hendrick, you picked a good one in this kid. That's the best medicine Rick Hendrick could get. Jeff Gordon wins the 1997 running of the Winston. Bobby Labonte second, Terry Labonte third. Give it to Earnhardt fourth ahead of Spencer fifth at the straight. There's a great battle for 15th, 16th, and 17th across the line. And yes, you earn thumbs up right there for Jeff Gordon. Now to Matt Yoakum with Ray Everham. Well, Ray, you said it was a big gamble bringing that brand new car to Charlotte for the Winston, but it sure paid off big tonight. Congratulations. Uh, I didn't say it was a gamble, um, but, you know, congratulations. Everybody did a great job. Uh, you know, that uh, I want to say hi to Rick and Linda and everybody uh, back there, and, and uh, I want to thank everybody for giving us the opportunity to do this. All the guys that worked hard on that car, all the guys at the R&D shop, it uh, paid off.
off tonight. You know, Jeff Gordon is a great race car driver and really want to say a special thanks to the people at Kellogg's for helping with that 1-800 bone marrow uh, program that they did for this weekend. And uh, it just was awful nice of them reach a lot of people with that. Well, Charlotte sure has been good to the Rainbow Warriors. And it's the seventh Chevrolet win here in the Winston in 13 years. We are heading to victory lane with you in a moment. Is in victory lane for the Winston. Glenn Jarrett's with him. <laughs> right now with a bunch of confetti, Jeff is really excited. He, he really wanted to get out of the car. He is as excited as I have ever seen him. Makes a big drink of Pepsi there. Jeff, come on down here, man. First of all, congratulations. Great run. And I want to know, what was the question you asked uh, Wayne Robertson there with Winston? How much money? Show me the money. <laughs> How much money did I win, man? This is awesome. I tell you what, we're going to name this the T-Rex Mobile right here uh, because uh, Rex Dumb and all the guys in the R&D department built this chassis. We're going to name it after him. And I uh, got to thank God. Uh, he's certainly on my side. That's a hectic race out there. And uh, to do what we did, come from the back to the front twice, and then to win that thing was awesome. And I uh, want to thank DuPont Automotive Fishes, Quaker State, Pepsi, Goodyear had a great tire, and Chevrolet, of course. Uh, good to know without that Monte Carlo. Jeff, you had to know you had a great race car after that first segment when you came all the way from the back road to finish up near the front like you did. You pretty much knew you had something for them. I knew I had an awesome race car. I'm telling you, that thing was bad to the bone. Uh, I drove in the first turn that stuck like glue, and I said, oh, yeah, here we come, man. And uh, I tried, you know, I, really my plan wasn't to try to win that first segment. Uh, I was going to just try to get as far as I could. But I didn't know I was going to get all the way to third and maybe have a shot at winning it. But I uh, want to thank R.J. Reynolds and Winston. They give us a lot of money for this championship, but they give us a lot of money to come out here and have fun and put on a great show for these fans. And they sure did that. Congratulations to Jeff and the whole team. Back to you, Eli. All right, Glenn. He's only the third multiple winner of the Winston. Dale Earnhardt with three wins. The late Davey Allison with two. And now Jeff Gordon with two wins in the Winston. To the garage. Bobby, time to go back into the midst of all of that celebration for the Miller Lite Pit Crew Award, brought to you by Miller Lite, who invite you to sit back and enjoy Miller time. Glenn Jarrett. And the recipient, of course, is Ray Everham. Ray, you guys did an awesome job preparing that car. Jeff said he knew on the first lap when he drove it in, it stuck like that. Man, I got something for him, but uh, you guys did a lot of hard work, a lot of preparation. Well, a lot of people did. You know, this victory, uh, you talk about a team victory. This is our Hendrick Motorsports Research and Development car, and everybody back at Hendrick Motorsports, all 150 people work real hard on this car, you know. So it's uh, it's something new, and I know this is making uh, Rick awful happy, but a lot of people worked on this race car, just wasn't a Rainbow Warriors. So congratulations to all of them. Am I hearing this right? This is a test car? Yeah, this was just a test. Pretty doggone good test, and it sure is not a dinosaur. Congratulations, Ray. Thank you very much. This was only a test. Had it been a real emergency, <laughs> we would have left the field. 